What's up everyone, it's your boy Red 89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we're going to be talking about Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, this is Tim Burton's latest film and the sequel to Beetlejuice and this is probably one of the longest gaps we've ever had when it comes to a first film and a sequel film. So does this film live up to the hype? Does it match the original? Does, are they able to capture that magic again? Today you're going to find out so let's get down to this video. Roll it. <laughs> So today we're here to talk about Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, and this is Tim Burton's latest film that stars Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, Jenna Ortega, Catherine O'Hare. We have Monica Bellucci in here, William Defoe. We have a whole cast of plenty. Just uh, really, there is a lot of lot of cast members in here. Does that mean it gets overstuffed? Is it a little overcrowded? We'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's start off with our positives, and our key positive is that one main thing is Tim Burton was able to capture that aesthetic in terms of the set design, the costume design, and even the characters, the OG characters that are coming back, they all fit like a glove. It really does feel like you're going right back to that time watching Beetlejuice. So like I said, Winona Ryder, Michael Keaton, Catherine O'Hara, knock it out of the park. My two standouts are Michael Keaton, he just really is amazing, and Catherine O'Hara. She really does steal a lot of the scenes that she's in. Another great addition to this film is going to be Monica Bellucci. I thought she was fantastic as Dolores. Did I want some more of her? We'll talk about a little of that later, but in terms of antagonist, her just entrance when she gets introduced and her entrance is fantastic when she gets resurrected. We have a like fun, fun cameo from a certain actor. Everybody's going to recognize him, of course, but yes, Monica Bellucci, key, key member of the new addition that I really enjoyed. Another awesome character is Rory. That's uh, Winona Ryder's kind of like right-hand man in terms of teammate when she's doing her TV show where she talks to spirits of course and then also he wants to marry her in this movie as well and he provides a lot of comedy relief that actually landed quite often Another fun side character is Bob. Like I said, this, this film is filled with a whole host of really fun side characters, but they don't all get the time to shine, but it is really cool. And like I said, the designs of the characters really sticks close to home and is very Tim Burton-esque. And also the music numbers. The music numbers, the dance numbers, I would say they're just as good or match that original one. Like I had a ton of fun. Specifically, there is a dance sequence and musical number involving a cake in the third act and it was slam dunk and they knocked it out of the park another thing is i like the nostalgia trip i think this one they didn't feel like they were just throwing member berries or trying to squeeze nostalgia out of you just to get you know money or just to get butts in the seats like it actually does feel like tim burton and them had some really love and attention that they paid attention to this story but like i said let's get into some mixed and negatives because there are a few things that i had a problem with one mixed thing is that this does feel like it was kind of three scripts or like two or three script ideas and they just kind of mashed them together. In terms of that, we're going to kind of lead into our negatives is that I wanted a lot more of Monica Bellucci's character who is introduced to be one of our antagonists in here and she gets sidelined for a whole 25 minutes where we don't see her like pretty much at all. Then we have other characters get introduced that has to do with Jenna Ortega. She plays Lydia Dietz's daughter in the film and there's a character that in Involves with her a guy named Jeremy and once we introduce him that's another side plot then we also have a side plot going on with Lydia herself and also Rory's character so like I said in terms of the overcrowdedness you really feel it in this film they probably could have stretched this film a good 10 or 15 minutes longer and that probably would have helped that out Another negative for me is going to be the fact that once we get to the third act, our resolution, how we resolve all our side plots and how they all meet and intersect together, it wraps up in about five to six minutes. It literally is like we spend this whole movie introducing some of these characters. They have these awesome entrances. They're talking about the, the stakes of the film. And you really don't feel it by the time you get to the end of the film. Like I said, the third act, it wraps up very quickly. And I was just like, wow, that was that was kind of it. Then we have a tacked on scene kind of at the end that didn't really land for me. That was one where the comedy, I was feeling a lot of the comedy. But we got to an end sequence scene that has to do with a certain character. And what happened in that scene, I was just like... It kind of it kind of came out of nowhere, and I just I didn't have fun with that scene. So that's one other negative right there. But in terms of the whole movie, the rest of it besides that, 
There are, like I said, some fun characters. The fun nostalgia trip going back down memory lane with a lot of these characters. Also, the creative new characters that they brought in. I just wish a lot of them got more shine. Another example is William Defoe. Besides just Monica Bellucci, because I'm always on her, because really, like, she's a fantastic actress. But who's going to complain if, like, you don't have more Monica Bellucci in your film? Come on now. But William Defoe is another side character in this film, and I don't think he necessarily gets the shine he deserves. And I kind of feel like you know that's the prime examples those two characters also I feel like this film is going to hinder on this isn't a negative or a mixed thing this is kind of my advice to you I really do recommend going to see this film in theaters but in terms of your enjoyment this is really going to hinder on the fact of do you have an attachment and a love for that first film? Because if you don't have an attachment or a love for that first film or anything like that I really don't think you're going to enjoy some of the stuff that's going to land in this one as for my overall feelings on the film, like I said, I totally recommend taking your family, or you can take your kids too, that I took my whole family, but your loved one or whoever you want to go with, I recommend going to the theaters to see this film, because like I said, it's it's got a big aesthetic, big sets going on, and there's a lot of cool musical numbers and creative characters, so it's really a film that does stand out on the big screen, so I highly recommend it. In terms of a rad rating for this bad boy, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is going to get a 7.5 out of 10 yes there are some like I said story problems that like i really do feel like held this film back but you can totally see the love in this film and where they were going and why they kind of wanted to stuff so much in this film because i really don't think they're gonna do another one they, they probably could they probably really could squeeze out another one you know warner brothers you know those production companies but in terms of story wise it really feels like tim burton and the writers tried to lay down a lot of stuff in this film so that way they can squeeze out a lot of love and show us like what they appreciate on screen so like i said i thoroughly enjoyed it 7.5 out of 10 for the rad rating please like the video that definitely helps out the channel subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime i drop a video because we're going to be continuing the content we got some more universal monsters horror reviews i got some special guests happening during october time i also got some more courage the cowardly dog deep dives going on and also some other physical media videos and other rad movie reviews that are going to be popping out so tons and tons of content you don't want to miss a thing but most importantly you all know what's up have a safe and happy day peace out